There's been a lot of chat about whether or not the new um, Italian prime minister is fascist. Georgia, Giorgia Meloni. Who, who can say? Who can who tell? Can say? Yeah. And I, I'm going to be, I'm going to admit it that like we did something on the Hill and I didn't have a lot of time to prep. I didn't know that we were going to talk about that. And I just tried to do my best cobble together. I was pretty sure she was fascist. I knew she was using fascist terminology. She was fascist signaling. The, lo of, the imagery, the logo. Well, I, yeah, I found that out while I was hosting, but I knew just from just her talking about like defending God. So um, here's the thing. We're going to listen to what this guest had to say on uh, Democracy Now. And I don't know if this is, is this like poaching an interview? It's not poaching. It's just meta. It's meta interviews. Right. We're yeah. going to watch. We're going to ask Amy Goodman if she can ask some questions to her guest. There, now, can there we you go. just start off by talking about, well, um, Georgia Maloney has declared victory. Talk about her and her party, what they represent. Ruth ben Geit. Yeah, um, Maloney is somebody who was a hardcore neo-fascist who um, was in the, with 15, she joined the party that was founded right after uh, Benito Mussolini's original party was banned in 1945. And this became the fourth largest party, the neo-fascist party, called the Italian Social Movement. And she was not only a militant, she became, by the 90s, the head of its student organization. And the flame, if you look at the logo of her party called Brothers of Italy today, which was founded in 2012, she insisted on keeping a tricolor flame in the logo. And that is the flame, uh, that's the symbol of the original neo-fascist party. And over the years, many people have told her uh, to get rid of that flame, uh, but she won't. So this tells us a lot about her, her loyalties, and she really sees her, her party as carrying the heritage of fascism into today, so much so that um, Ignacio La Russa, who's a party uh, elder, let's say, he said a few days ago, we are all heirs of the Duce. Huh. Let me go to a clip of Georgia Maloney as a teenager describing her support uh, for the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. I believe that Mussolini was a good politician, which means that everything he did, he did for Italy. Okay. So that's her praising Mussolini in French, because she speaks um, Italian, English, Spanish, and French. Which you don't, uh, you know, you know what's scarier than a fascist? A quadrilingual fascist. Here are these uh, two logos. This logo on the left hand side, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, but is the, um, the new one. And juxtaposed with the old, you can see that uh, it's um, same pretty, colors, same flame. Same, yeah. She can't, she, she can't. What is it? It's her old flame. She can't get rid of She wishes oh. she could quit it. Her old flame. I want to go to Georgia Maloney speaking to her supporters in Spanish, addressing the far-right Vox Party of Spain. The left defends the woman unless it encounters a criminal foreigner. At that moment, because of their ideology, the criminal foreigner is more valuable than the woman. And they would say that you're a dangerous extremist, racist, fascist, denier, homophobic. They would say you're not presentable and having capable leaders to govern. They would say it is useless to vote for you because you don't have a chance to win. But you know what? Don't be afraid because they don't decide. You, the people, decide. The people are the first strength that the party needs. And this is more of her addressing Vox Party of Spain. Now is not the time for weak thoughts. Today, the left-wing secularism and radical Islam are a risk to our roots. Against this challenge, there is no middle ground. Either you say yes or you say no. Yes to the natural family, no to the LGBT lobby. Yes to sex identity, no to gender ideology. Yes to the culture of life, not the abysm of death. 
Yes to the University of the Cross, no to the Islamist violence. Yes to secure borders, no to mass migration. Yes to the work of our citizens, no to big international finance. Yes to the sovereignty of peoples, no to the bureaucrats in Brussels. And yes to our civilization. That's a little taste. Yeah, I... Yeah, I, I just highlighted TTID's uh, Forever's comment because it really took the words right out of my mouth was that this portion of the program is brought to you by projection. Uh, Meaning what? I saw that. I wasn't sure what that meant, actually. Well, and I'm sure TTID, correct me if I'm wrong in, in the interpretation. Come on down, TTID. Let yeah, in, know. in the interpretation here, but my interpretation of that was essentially like... Uh, basically projecting outward that which you are guilty right of, right but i just know. didn't know who's projecting what oh the the fascists <laughs> you know like the, this this uh and i'm interested to hear what what you think katie but to me that language everything we just heard it strikes me as the exact same flavor of full right-wing populist rhetoric right. that we see everywhere yeah. uh, rising, I mean, around the world, but in the United States. And it seems to me like now, given this example too, worldwide, we've got this uh, clash between faux right-wing populism and the actual left-wing populism. Right. And both of them are appealing to the same, you know, uh, part of of the public you know the outrage over you know all of the societal wrongs that we talk about so often it's just that the only difference here to me at least is that the actual left uh um offers an an accurate analysis and identification of what the problem is and then also actual effective solutions to those problems right. whereas, whereas what we just heard to me is simply just exploiting those um it's trump versus bernie yes 